Welcome back, everybody, to Kindred Spirits. This was the first time that I ended an episode in the middle of a day, but, I mean, I wanted to leave it off on a bit of a cliffhanger, and I was running out of time, so it both kind of worked out. Anyways, here we are. I think we all know what's about to happen, so let's just get right into it. Uh, uh hello? Yumi's, uh, sneaking into the school. She doesn't know if anyone's here yet. Oh, they're here. Hey, Yunichen, haha, <laughs> you don't have to be so on edge yet. It's not quite late enough to get in trouble. Just take a seat and relax. Oh, I guess they're in on it. Uh, okay. They say that, but students are supposed to be leaving in just a little bit. Heading back to school after their track practice ended, I had gone straight to their club room in the Kiyomagiri. That was completely wrong, but I'm not even going to try again. I was relieved to find Emishima-senpai and Inamoto-senpai there waiting for me. The plan was to have was have the plan may have been to sneak into school at night but it wasn't as if i could just waltz through the gate i'd had the idea to hide somewhere before the gates closed and kill time until night and coming up with no other option i asked these two for help i thought they'd be suspicious but they agreed to help right away despite recently retiring they went out of their way to show up at practice today so they could be here to help with our infiltration all I told them was I wanted to stay over at school, so I'm not sure how they take their how to take their enthusiasm. It's a bit odd or embarrassing that they don't ha seem to have any questions. Hina's done with practice, so she's taking a shower. We told her to get herself cleaned up after all. <laughs> I really feel like they know a bit too much, and I'm not sure how to respond to that. Ah, oh, that's right. Here, Yuna-chan. Huh? Here are the keys to the club room and to the tower. You can get through the patrols by locking the door to the room and keeping the lights off. Then just make sure they're both locked when you're heading home tomorrow. You can give the keys to Hina. Alright, I'm surprised you've got a key to the building, though. Aha, uh -huh. well, you see, it's a duplicate. It's passed down through the captains of the athletics club here since it's convenient, you know? You mean... The school has no idea, of course, officially. Though they're probably figured it out, since there are teachers who used to go here, you know. But there's no problem as long as anybody, as nobody gets into trouble using it. <laughs> We're currently trying to do something that could get us in quite a lot of that, though. Just make sure you lock up afterwards, alright? Yes, thank you. I took the two keys from Inamoto Senpai. If we wanted to back out, I think that option's gone now. There's no escape anymore. If these two know we're staying over, we can't just go back home. At this point, I'm only getting more nervous. I have to suppress the urge to imagine what'll, what we'll be doing after this. It might be Sachi-san and Megami borrowing our bodies, but physically, it's still going to be us doing it. But what sort of things are we going to do? Are they going to do? With Hina and me. Yuna chan uh, yes. You shouldn't be so nervous. Not that I can't empathize. Don't tease her too much, Ratsuri. You'll only make her more anxious. <laughs> I get the feeling my face looks as hot as it feels, and even if it doesn't, I get the feeling these two can see right through me anyway. Well, you'll be with Hina, so just relax. You've slept together before, right? Just sleeping, that is. Uh, yeah? What am I doing giving her an honest answer? That much is the same. Then just think of the rest as tickling a little. T tickling? It's kind of hard to decide how concrete she's being, but the fact that I can ima I can kind of imagine what she means is... Oh, and, uh... Y yes? You don't need to force anything, okay? F force? Please don't, Emishimai Senpai. Inamoto Senpai, could you stop her already? Stop it, Matsuri. Oh good, really? Please help. <laughs> there's no way to give proper advice. Listen, Yuna-chan. There's no rule saying you need to put any fingers in. The uh, fingers? <laughs> and you'll be fine without using any tools or anything. T tools Right, right. Oh, and your phone... <laughs> your phones break easier than you'd think, so be careful, yeah? Uh, I've had enough of these two. <laughs> well, it's about time to get out of here. Hina will be back soon, I'm sure. 
Oh, I suppose that will have to be enough advice then. They're just teasing me. I feel a bit pathetic for letting them get a rise out of me. That's enough kidding around, right, Unicham? Right. I think you guys would be fine. If you didn't end up doing anything too, just hang out with Hina a little, you know? Yep, I'm sure Hina would just have fun chatting for the night. Uh-huh. If it were just going to be the two of us, then it'd probably be fine. But tonight isn't just for us. It's for Sachi-san and Megami. And that's why we're here at school. Why we decided to spend the night here. It's not that I'm resolving myself to it or anything, but I try to think back to the feelings I had when I proposed this idea. Hmm, well, I'm sure it'll be fine. I just wanted to do whatever we could for them. I'm back. Ah, Unity. The door opened and Hina stepped in. She walked over to me, her hair still wet from the shower. Yeah, there you are, Hina. Hmm. Well, we'll see you two later. Uh, yes, thank you again for today. It's fine, we're happy to help. See ya, Hina. You can do it. Uh-huh. Bye, Yuna-chan. Have fun. Yeah. Saying their farewells, Amashima senpai and Inamoto senpai left the room together. Hina and I were left alone, but... In a little while, Sachi-sen and Megami should show up. Then we'll kill a little time here. And wait for and wait for night. Sachi-san and Megami's night. Oh, there are futons laid out. Amashima Senpai and Inamoto Senpai's doing, I'm sure. Is this their idea of being considerate, or are they teasing us? They told us we could go ahead to use this room on the second floor of the... Oh boy. Kumo Miyagara room. The room they st I stayed in during the summer camp. There are two futons nicely laid out ahead of time. I'm thankful, I suppose, but when they're set out for us like this, it feels kind of... Oh. What's wrong, Unity? It's nothing. On the table in the corner, those two casually left tissues and wipes. Wet wipes. <laughs> All their experience kind of makes their preparations here seem a little graphic. We killed time back in the track team club room after that, and it's just around midnight now. Around 7, a teacher had come to make sure the rooms were empty, and she came around again at 9 to make sure all the doors were locked. We'd gotten through both checks by keeping quiet. Megami was totally carefree, of course, saying, It's like we're in a spy movie. Easy for her, but my heart had been pounding non-stop, worrying about what we'd do if she found us. Then, thinking we probably had the building to ourselves, we climbed up to the second floor room. I'd lit a small lamp, hoping that the light wouldn't leak outside as long as we kept the curtains closed. And this is how we found the room. Hey, Mitsuri-chan and Miyu-chan went out of their way to prepare this for us, didn't they? Seems like it. Please don't come on the things on the table. I don't think I'd be able to explain. Uh, <laughs> Sachi said suddenly went quiet after looking around the room. <laughs> I don't have any words either. I mean, after this will be, uh, what should I do? How do we get started? Do I say something? What should, you know, I? While I was debating on how to proceed, Hina tugged on my arm. Yeah. So what should we do? Uh, what, or, um, you can't just ask like that so bluntly. Why is Hina acting like she usually does? <laughs> Sachi-san quietly giggled beside me as all the blood rushed to my head. Yes, maybe we should get started. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we couldn't just stand there, so he and I sat down on the futon. Sachi-san and Megami took places in front of us. I've been possessed a few times now. Usually the two of them have something they want to eat or somewhere they want me to take them. Those times I was just lending them my senses a little, but just once. 
We did an experiment to see how far they could possess, how far their possession could go, and Megami took over my body. It was an odd experience. I couldn't move a finger, but my body seemed to be walking around all, its, all on its own. Once was enough for me, and I made them swear never to do it again. But today, I'm going to be possessed like that once again. Well then, both of you. Thank you. I wonder who takes over who. I propose this, and I'm prepared, but I'm still a little scared. In a few moments, we're going to be possessed by spirits, and then Hina and I... Hina... I reflexively grabbed her hand. Yonane? Listen, don't be scared, okay? You might just feel like you're floating a little, and... Are these Sachi-san and Megami-san? What? Y you can see them? Hina's eyes were fixed right on Megami, who is sitting across from her. They were clearly focused on her. Hmm, there's a person in white clothes and one in black clothes. They just appeared. Uh, Megami's the one in front of you and Sachi stands in front of me. Hmm, I see. I'm Hina. Nice to meet you. She's so calm all the time. It's kind of weird. I'm Nagatami. Megami, nice to meet you. Enoki Sachi, thank you for today, Hina chan. Suddenly, we're doing introductions again. The pace sure has gotten a little mixed up, but now it's nice and relaxed, like Hina. I feel a little less nervous now, too. This girl really is amazing. Does she. Is that Farah hair? really understand what we're going to be doing or that she really or that she's really seen spirits right in front of her that she's going to be possessed and we're going to uh, have sex she's looking at Megami's hairstyle like all of that means nothing to her uh, uh, not, not really I, I think it's just a normal hairstyle <laughs> I'm surprised you know that Hina my dad said he was a big fan of it when he was a kid. D did he? It, it kind of hurts to hear that. Why does it hurt to hear that? <laughs> yeah, the tension's really evaporated. If she's doing this on purpose, then Hina really is incredible. I doubt she is, though, which is still pretty incredible. Sachi-san? Uh, yeah, yes, what is it? Sorry for the wait. I guess I've kind of relaxed. I see. Let's get started. Uh, please just go ahead. Alright, uh, pardon me. Excuse me. They said, they actually said approached me and Megami moving towards Hina. They pulled right up to us and... Got in close like we were about to kiss. The moment I closed my eyes, I suddenly felt the weight lifting from my body. My body is heavy. No, this isn't weariness or fatigue. It's a nostalgic sensation, that's right. A sensation I remember from when I was alive when I still had a body of my own. I looked down at my hands, even those tiny movements had weight to them. When I saw... What I saw were my own hands and the sleeves of my black uniform. Are, are these my hands? I see, I've completely possessed Unisan, even enough to project my form over hers. Oh, wow, my body is so heavy. There's a voice from beside me, my beloved Megami's voice. Megami? I turned around and saw her there, in her white uniform with her hazel hair, my sweetheart, with her adorable face. Such a sad. Megami was looking at me too, and she broke into an absolute stunning smile. It's you, Sachi-san. 
Her face, her figure, it's so similar to me. Yet somehow it feels so new to see her with these borrowed bodies. And my heart is positively soaring. If I reach out, I'll be able to touch her. That's all it is yet. This is the moment I've been waiting for, isn't it? When I finally be able to touch you. M me too, Sachi-san. I was waiting all this time for you to be able to hold me, Sachi-san. We have physical bodies now. Bodies with which we can touch and know each other. Bodies which with which with which ugh, which we've borrowed from Yuna and Hina. Megami, is Hina Chan alright? Uh, Hina Chan, uh, I searched for Yuna soon as I asked Megami. Part of me was worried that losing sight of her would mean never being able to return her body. Yuna Sen? I sifted through my consciousness for her. Ah. And when I closed my eyes in the corner of my mind, I found Unisan floating with her eyes closed and her body limp. Thank goodness, there she is. <laughs> there she is. I found Hina-chan in a corner. It's like she's sleeping. Yes, Unisan seems to be sleeping inside me as well. I breathe a sigh of relief. I should be able to return her body when she wakes up, after all. How boring, and here we are about to show them the ropes. <laughs> Did you want them to watch Megami? Uh, oh no, I, I take it back. I don't want anyone spying on my first time with you, Saji-san. <laughs> How selfish of us when we've watched so many other girls. Uh, well, we didn't have a choice, did we? This time... I'm glad to be alone with you too, Megami. Megami leaned into me. Megami? I pressed my hand softly to her cheek and raised her chin just a touch. There we go, that's nice. And I brought our lips together. Uh, the feel of Megami's lips against mine, what I've dreamed of for so long, they're soft. I can feel the warmth pouring out of where her hands met her lap. Our lips parted. And I opened my eyes once more. Megami's eyes reflected mine as they drew open at the same time. So this is a kiss. Yes. So that's what a kiss feels like. It's something we've done so many times, yet... The sensation seemed to travel from my lips to my chest, where I felt a tightening. I felt a heat. I felt my own pulse quicken these feelings. So that's what it's like for your lips to meet. Yes, it is. Even though I was, it was unknown, even though the, even that was unknown to us since we'd become spirits before we'd learned of kissing, all we'd known was that a kiss meant pressing your lips together. So we'd brought our faces close to each other, close enough to touch. We were happy just to do that, and it was enough for Megami to feel precious to me. But I'd never felt my chest tighten like this. I'd never felt this happy. It's all thanks to Yunisan and Hina-chan that I'm finally able to truly kiss you, Megami. Yeah, you're right. My heart's pounding like crazy. My heart... And my heart would not be soaring like this if it weren't for the body I inhabited now as well. I'd forgotten this sensation, these feelings. Me too. It's been so long, I'd forgotten. I thought back to a moment to those days. Those days I'd spent merely gazing at her. Yes, these feelings, they must be the same as what I experienced then. And now, Sashi-san? I'm able to feel them for you, Megami. I'm so happy that I met you. <laughs> so... 
Megan me leapt into my arms, into my waiting embrace. We kissed again, and then sensa sensation raced through me once more. Megan me pulled back slowly. Even the loneliness I'd felt in that instant stung somehow pleasantly in my heart. Yes? I'm so awful. Just now, I thought that I didn't want to ever give this body back. I thought that if we just stayed in this place of Pina and Unit, that we could be together like this forever. Negami. The words stabbed into my heart. I'm so selfish. How could I think something like that? I hate it. Yuna would be so, so disgusted with me, Sachi-san. You must hate me. No, that's not true. I softly stroked her cheek. How could I hate you, Megami? Yes, all I feel for you is love, Megami. But I'm sure I feel the same way. You just realized it a little earlier. Yes, I'm sure I'd feel the same way. Think of the same thing now that I know these feelings. But you understand that we can't do that, Megami. That's what you said, isn't it? That's why you said it, isn't it? You put it into words to caution yourself, didn't you? You think so? Yes, I do. It's because you are this way that I love you, Megami. So, Megami? Yes? Do you remember the day we first spoke? The day you confessed to me? Uh, yes. I still knew nothing about you then, and you knew nothing about me either, right? Yes. We'd only seen each other until then. It was only when you became a spirit like me that we were able to converse. But I fell in love with you. And you fell for me too. We were able to become sweethearts. Yes. And we've spent so long together since then, learning about each other little by little in that time. Looking down over the school from the roof, all the while we'd spend our time together watching the lives of the girls going to the school. I was still able to love you all that time. I think of you as my precious sweetheart. M me too, Sachi-san. Isn't that right? Even though... There were things still locked in our hearts until quite recently. Yes. Our love didn't change, even after we had opened ourselves to each other. That's why... We can be here like this. Let me tell you again, Megami, that I'm happy to have met you. M me too. I'm glad I met you too, Sachi-san. I'm glad I fell for you. We'll be together forever, Megami. Y yes, forever. Let's stay together forever, Sachi-san. Yes, together forever. Wherever we go, forever, however long that is. Let's stay together. Today, now, and from now on. I feel like I've been dreaming. Like I've been asleep for days. Ever since Sachi-san came into my body, my memories after that are vague, and I'm not sure how long it's really been. Just that floating feeling remains, huh? So this is what it feels like to be possessed. Yuna-san? Yuna -san? Hmm? Yeah, it feels like waking up from a deep sleep. Everything around me is fuzzy, slowly coming back into focus. Such a sense looking down on me and Megami and Hina. Uh, Hina. Hina and I. You woke up first. I guess she's making sure I'm really awake. Hina's waving her hand in front of my face. I have reached up and grabbed it. Yes, I can feel your hand. It's a little warm. I'm so glad you're back with us. Uh, yeah, yes, I, I'm okay now. 
Yeah, my head is getting clear. I'm slowly sat up and took stock of myself. Uh, good, I'm wearing clothes. I was a little worried I'd be naked. <laughs> After saying that much, some of the vague memories in my head became clearer, as if they suddenly appeared out of a fog. Uh... We put our clothes on again afterward. Uh, my face is on fire. That's right. I was just naked and... Hey, what are you looking for me for? Because... Sachi-san was possessing me, but Megumi and I... No... Hmm? Uh, Ada possessed by Megumi and I are... I, I don't think I can make eye contact with her right now. Uh, what's wrong, you, Nene? Do you feel bad? Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm fine. Hina seems fine. Does she not remember it? Maybe that's for the best then. I think I'll try not to remember it too. I'd like to just forget it happened. Yinasen, you really feel alright? Yes. I see, I'm glad. I've never possessed someone so deeply before. I was so worried when you wouldn't wake up, Yinasen. I I'm fine. Hina chan got up right after. I wonder why. Does it just vary from person to person? Well, Hina's always been a late sleeper. I'm relieved that you're awake now. I didn't want to leave without saying anything to you. Hina hmm? san, would you spend a little more time with us? We left the room and stepped carefully down the pitch black stairs. Unlocking the entrance, we headed outside. Are we going somewhere? In response to Hina's question, Megami only gave a little nod. I feel a- I get a feeling, just a feeling, that I know where they're headed. And this stirring in my heart is because I know. May we take a little walk? A walk for me and Hina, maybe, but for Sachi Sen and Megami? The feeling in my heart turned out to be true. Yes, you can see it now. We could see it clearly from across the campus. I'd known from far away, but when we got closer, right up next to it, it was dazzling. The Anoki tree, known as Sachi Sen's memorial, right from that tree, was a pillar of light ascending into the sky. It had no peak, just endless light reaching between the stars. The light from that pillar shone down on us. Hina and I glowed under the light, but for Sachi Sen and Megumi, it seemed to pour down around them, as if to pull them up with it. I get the feeling that I know what this means. Sachi San, who died in an accident, carrying feelings she couldn't express. She'd always longed to find a wonderful partner and become one with her body and soul. Megami, who'd fallen in love with Sachi San and died of illness. She became a spirit, formed a relationship with Sachi San, and longed only to be together with her forever. So they really have no more regrets. I see. There's nothing else. I don't know whether to call it moving on or attaining peace, but the two of them are leaving. I apologize for making you come with us, but... So she sent her to us in the light. Megami quietly held her hand at her side. I want the two of you to see us off, after all. So you're really leaving. I knew that. I understood. I'd realized the meaning of their act today, that it would mean they held no more regrets. That there would be no reason for them to stay here. That they would leave. I'd known that. Yet...
thank you for everything, Yuna-san. I'm so glad we met you. Because of you, Megami and I were finally able to be together. When Sachi-san's words, tears pooled into Megami's eyes and spilled slowly down her cheeks, those tears too shone like little drops of sparkling light. We were able to end our days of idle waiting. Our time with you was truly so much fun. It was fun for me too. Somehow even their words seemed to sparkle. Thank you too. Thanks to you, we didn't have to merely watch anymore. We could come to know so many wonderful girls. We were able to confirm their feelings, we were able to nurture their feelings and help them bear fruit. We were able to see them joining with their lovers. It made me so happy. It was so much fun. They probably sounded that way because... I'm sorry. I think we asked some unreasonable things of you. M me too. I I I'm sorry, Yuna. I might have said some really mean things since you were never lost your cool. Don't worry about it. They were the words I had been longing to hear. I felt the same way. But I can't do anything now except listen to their words. But, but, it was so much fun doing all that stuff with you, Yuna. Doing so much at school, like the camp and the school festival, since all I could do before was watch. Right. For Sachi-sen, it's been 80 years. For Megami, 30. They've watched over this school from the roof all that time. Just watching. And if we'd never met, they'd still be watching, just waiting for anyone to talk to. I see. So you both had fun. So it was fun. Thank you, Yuna-san. Let us say it one more time. Thank you, Yuna. We're thankful to everyone else too. You, Hina-chan, and Anna-chan, all the girls we met. Maki-chan, we sent those two. Everyone, really. It's true. Yeah, I know. They can't tell them, but thanks to you and everyone else, I can finally go with Megami. <laughs> Megami broke into sobbing and Sachi-san gently stroked her hair. The sight seems so fitting, the two of them together like this. The light grew a little stronger, the light surrounding them. It looks like it's time to say goodbye. Be happy forever, okay? You really took your time getting together after all. You could never break up with Hina-chan, okay? <laughs> okay. I answered, gripping Hina's hand tighter, her warm hand squeezed back in mine. Don't pretend that you're perfect at everything, Yuna. You can be pretty sloppy sometimes, you know. Yeah, I know. From now on, forever. Stay well, you two. Hina-chan, live a long life and be happy. Yes. Megami was beyond words now. Sachi-san warmly held onto her hand. Like Hina and me, Sachi-san, Megami-san. Take care. Bye-bye. See you later. Yes, see you later, Hina-chan. Later. That's... that won't... Megami, think, I think so too. I hope we can meet again. Come on now, Megami. Let's say our farewells properly.
Hina-chan? Yuna? Goodbye. See you later. Well, Hina-sen, we'll be going now. Goodbye, and we'll see you later. Yes. Take care of yourselves. I couldn't hear their words anymore. I couldn't see I couldn't see them very clearly. The light around them enveloped their forms, trying to quietly take them away, trying to leave. They faded into the light. The light. The whole pillar of it. Slowly faded. With them inside dimming. Good goodbye. It was gone. The darkness of the light, nearing morning, engulfed the tree in the shadow. See you later. Leaving me and Hina still holding hands. Sechi Sen and Megami, the two kindred spirits have gone home. To where? I wonder. To where, I wonder. Both of them, together. The breath I released hung in the air, a faint mist. What was it, a sigh, perhaps, of relief? It's pretty cold out. It was now past five in the morning, but the sun still hid behind the horizon. Only a light hue was growing in the eastern sky. After that, we cleaned up the room, gathered our stuff, made sure all the doors were locked, and left. Yeah. We walked down Camellia Lane together, hand in hand. You're not cold, Hina? No, I'm good. No problem. I can't believe you're not cold in that tracksuit. Is it just because you're used to it? Tracksuits are pretty warm, you know. Are they? Hmm, I guess they are. We walk slowly. Are you cold, Yunane? Just a little. The air is getting chilly. It's almost winter, after all. We'll have to get out of our warmer clothes tomorrow. We've got a blazer somewhere, right? But I won't wear it. I'm fine like this. My hand around Hina's is warm. Thought so. A tracksuit won't be warm enough for winter, though. I'm good. I've got a windbreaker. I see. We're just walking, talking about nothing in particular, slowly on our way home. Me and Hina. This time, the sigh was probably for the cold breeze. Hey, Hina? I called out to her beside me. Hina gave her usual quick reply. You saw something kind of am We saw something kind of amazing, didn't we? I just muttered, staring ahead. My words came out softly in the cold morning air. Could you see it, Hina? It was really sparkly. Yes, it was. Satri Sen and Megami, it just happened. They left, went home. I'm finally able to see their faces in my mind. I couldn't recall the image until now, after all, while we were leaving, and not while we were walking here. Their faces at the end weren't clear. What they looked like, what we talked about, what they told me at the end. Even though I was watching the whole time, I'd watched everything. Afterwards, suddenly, it had all gone fuzzy. I wonder why. Hinane? Hina's saying something to me. I just gave her a little nod. I'm listening, Hina. Hinane? One more time, from right beside me. I gave her another nod, still staring ahead and walking slowly. Hinane? One more time, this time... Hina's face was right in front of mine. Hina? Hina had stepped ahead of me at some point. She was looking right at my face. 
I stopped walking and stood still on instinct. My arms rose up to catch her in them. What is it? Are you okay? Hina's face filled my view, blurry for some reason. I held her tight, fearing that she might fade into the blur if I didn't. Why? You're crying. Hina told me the reason. I see. Only now did I notice the tears trailing down my cheeks. Are you sad? Hina asked me. No, I shook my head. Did it hurt? That wasn't really it. I shook my head again. <laughs> Why are you crying? Hina's voice was strangely hesitant, a little anxious. I held her tight, embracing those feelings of hers as they bled into her voice. Hina, I... All this time... I was having fun. I closed my eyes. I couldn't see Hina's face anymore, but her body, her warmth, was in my arms. Ever since I met Sachi-san and Megami, since that day we'd met in May, I've... Ever since then, since they asked for my help, I've been having fun. At first I thought I didn't want to help them, it almost felt like I was being forced. Helping other people with their love lives, meddling in affairs that were none of my business. At first I didn't want to do it, I didn't want to involve myself with other people that much, but I agreed. And every day after that, cleaning up an unused reference room, scheming how to separate those three, failing entirely and just fail flailing about in confusion, chasing someone around the school, critiquing song lyrics on my way to school, then unexpectedly being pulled onto the stage, cooking at the summer camp and all the suspense of the fight. I spent time with those two every day, doing all sorts of things. I joined in the summer camp and helped during the school festival, and all of a sudden I knew so many people. I had friends. Every day was completely unlike the one before, but I really enjoyed all of it. I know that now. I was really enjoying it. Thinking every day about what to do for all those girls. My help was supposed to be a secret, but at some point along the way, I'd got to know them, became friends. All this happy year, my days have changed. My days with Sachi-san and Megami just ended. Are really over now. I couldn't understand that right away. Just now, I finally... So I... Got that. This feeling, it's... Miss them. You know what Hina's hand touched my cheek, her warm hand. You miss them. You didn't want them to go? No, that's not it. I shook my head. Hina's hand slid down my arm, still on my cheek. I'm not sad, and it didn't hurt. That's true. I knew they'd leave. That's why I helped them so much. They were supporting everyone so that they could go home. To, who, to wherever they've gone for all this time. They longed to help those girls and finally found me. Now I can remember it clearly here with my eyes closed. Sachi-san was smiling and beside her Megami was sobbing, but they both said goodbye and went home. They left together just as they wished. So... I'm not sad, and saying goodbye didn't hurt. It was seeing them off on their journey. But I won't be able to see them anymore. Even if I go up to the roof, they won't be there. I'll miss them. So this is how it feels to have a hole in your heart. I won't see them again. I have every day, and they won't be on the roof anymore. The two kindred spirits. It'd be nice. It'd be nice. If you could see them again someday, Sachi-san and Megami-san. 
That's right, they said so at the end, both of them, and me too. See you later. I wonder when and where. Will we ever meet again, now that they've gone? But we might, instead of thinking that we won't, thinking that maybe somewhere we will. I'd like to think that. That's why we said it, all of us. Me, Saji-san, and Megami. See you later. I slowly opened my eyes, and they met Hina with Hina's. She'd been watching me the whole time. Thank you. If not for them, I probably wouldn't be holding her like this now. No, I'm sure I wouldn't be together with my precious Hina like this. I only learned of this feeling after meeting them. I only realized it. And now I'm able to tell her. I love you. I can tell her. I can hold her. Me too, Unity. I love you. As I listened to her words, I finally released her. And I held her hand. In the chill of the morning air, we warmed our fingers and our palms. And we slowly started walking. Down Camellia Lane, on our way home from school. The final winter of my middle school years. I was still weak then, I know that now. Back then, their words weren't meant to hurt, I'm sure. They only came out because I wasn't there with them. Trivial words. Words without feeling behind them. No matter what truth they held, words spoken lightly. And when I, and I went and got hurt all on my own. I closed my heart on my own, denied the person I'd been. I decided not to get close to people. And went up to the roof. I met those two a few springs later. In this last half year, starting with my incredible meeting with two kindred spirits in May, so many things have happened. I've met so many people. I quietly watched over the feelings of the people I had met and sometimes helped them. I saw the, moment th the moments those feelings bore fruit, saw couples walking together, smiling happily. And I'm sure I was able to change too. I finally pulled out the little thorns stuck in my heart. They're gone now. They've dissolved and disappeared. And I've obtained something precious in my hand right now. She's small, cute, level-headed, dependable. Someone I want to look after, but someone who's always watched and encouraged me. I love her. Hina, my girlfriend. And I'm a girl too, but we're bound together by the truest of feelings. I want to be with her forever, like this, forever. I want to walk with her like this, forever. Hina, holding your hand. I think we're gonna stop there. I don't know what's gonna happen now, but... Oh. Maybe I'll wait till this is over. But we still... I don't think it's over because there is still another month in our calendar. You're not here anymore, but... I'll tell you. Like I've done this past half year. Like those lunches, chatting with all those things, and all the plans we made. I want to tell you about me, about Hina, about everyone, about this school. Okay. 
I'll eat lunch and think about the day, what's happened, what I've seen. Sometimes with Hina. And we'll bring Anno now and then. I'll invite my friends. I'll look down over the school where you two were. So it does look like we have one more day, but that's for next time. This was, wow, that was a really long episode, but that was good. Oh, that was very nice. So, well, I don't have anything else to say, so we'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you like this. We'll see you next time, and goodbye.